Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part four of And They Worshipped the Dragon. In this, I'm going to show you two things. I'm planning on showing you two things. One, when were the angels created, including Satan, the devil, Lucifer, by whatever name you wish to call him? And second, when did he fall and take with him the a third of the angels? So let's take a look. Now, in the previous lesson, we looked at the six days of creation. And on the sixth day, God took of the earth, formed man, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Well, on day one, no angels created. Day two, no angels. Day three, no angels. Day four, no angels. Day five, no angels. Day six, no angels, and on the seventh day, God rested. So, when were the angels created? Well, in day one, he created the heaven and the earth. So, let's take a look at that real quick. All right, just for a recap, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. So, well, let's keep reading. Verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Firmament refers to the sky, or heaven if you want to call it that. Verse 8, And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the water called he seas. And God saw it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Okay, so in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Pretty simple, right? Well, let's take a look. Turn your Bible to Job, the book of Job, chapter 38. All right, Job 38 starting in verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man. Uh, this is modern day expression would be put your pants on. You know, who, who wears the pants in the family? You know, I guess that's basically how you could, you know. Uh, have you ever heard the expression, she wears the pants in the family? Well, that that's how I take this. Yeah, if you disagree, that's fine. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. In other words, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to answer me. Verse 4. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? In other words, where were you when I created the heaven, when I created the earth? Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures 
thereof. If thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it. Now, anybody that's done carpentry work, you know that when you're starting to do a foundation, they stretch a line. They stretch the line out, and then they measure from the line. So, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Hmm, good question. Is the earth, uh, when, when God laid the foundation of the earth, what's it attached to? You know, he's asking Job these questions. Or, who laid the cornerstone thereof? Well, guess what? In the Bible, in the New Testament, Jesus is called the cornerstone, because guess what? The Bible plainly declares that Jesus created the heaven and the earth. And the Bible says that God created the heaven and the earth. So if, you know, when I took math in college, I learned that if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So if God created the heavens and the earth and Jesus created the heavens and the earth, then that means Jesus is God in the flesh. Okay? He's the cornerstone. And if you haven't figured it out, <laughs> the Bible is about Jesus redeeming his fallen creation. And that's us, especially me. The fallen part, that is. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Verse 7, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, this is one complete thought. Okay, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, now keep that in mind, stars, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, the Bible sometimes declares stars are angels. Sometimes it's talking about a sun in the sky, you know, at night, twinkle, twinkle, little star, right? How's that little song go? But sometimes they're called, uh, stars are a figure of speech of angels. And the sons of God. It says they shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. The morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted, shouted for joy at the foundations of the earth. These have to be angels because God created everything in six days. The seventh day he rested, and there's no angels being created in any of these, those seven days. There's nothing. So evidently, if you use logic, these angels had to have been created prior to the earth. They had to be. I mean, there's, if somebody's got a better theory, I'm open to listen to it. Okay, I'm not the uh, one with all the truth here. But you know what? If it doesn't, I've looked at all the other theories and there's holes in them. So, you know, but, uh, and who are these sons of God? They've got to be angels. So when you read Genesis 6 about the sons of God intermarrying, uh, marrying the daughters of men and they had giants, this is what they're talking about. 
Because let me tell you something, people. We don't become the sons of God until the New Testament, until we're born again of the Holy Spirit, until we, until Jesus came and we were born again. We don't become the sons of God until the New Testament. And besides that, who are the angels' son? I mean, you know, who created the angels? Uh, God did. So aren't they the sons of God? Of course they are. Because remember on the sixth day, God said he looked at everything and it was good? Let's take a look at that. All right, Genesis 1 and verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. It was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. The seventh day, God sanctified it, and he rested. That was the Sabbath, the seventh day. So evidently, the angels were made before the earth. Then God made the earth. On the sixth day, God made, formed Adam's body of the dust of the earth. He looked at everything he made on the sixth day, and he declared that it was very good. Now, obviously, if Satan was evil and had uh, fallen from heaven, it wouldn't be very good, would it? So up to this point in time, Satan had to have been Lucifer or whatever his real name was. Lucifer just means the light bearer. Okay, so up to this point, everything's good. All right, so that's my take. So when did Satan fall? Well, when you get to Genesis chapter 2, doesn't it say that um, Genesis 2, 9, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yes, evil. In Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 4, it says, the, the Bible declares, the scriptures, The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. I mean, God created Satan good. But we're going to read what happened, why he fell. We're going to do a little study on that. In the book of Isaiah 45 and verse 7, the Bible declares, I form the light and create darkness. Now, what is darkness? Darkness is just the absence of light, just like cold is the absence of heat or warmth. Think about that. And what is evil? The absence of good. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Well, guess what? God created Satan good. Satan decided to become evil, being lifted up with pride, and became evil. Now, since the Lord created Satan, and he became evil, technically God created evil. Technically, he did. But he didn't create him evil to begin with. God created Satan good, and then he became evil. I hope that makes sense. So technically, God did create evil by creating Satan, who fell, by the way. 
Now, the thing is, I've got an entire playlist on the, uh, the sons of God. If you're interested in the angels that sinned in Genesis chapter 6 that lead, led to the flood of Noah, I have an entire playlist on that. I go into a lot more detail. And you can take a look at it. And by the get time you get done, you'll learn that uh, the stars and the sons of God refers to angels. Uh, let's take a look at wandering uh, stars. Well, let's take a look at stars. Turn to the book of Jude, chapter 1. Uh, let's see, verse 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Cori. Now Cain was a murderer. Balaam was a, a prophet of God that decided to sell out for money. And Cori uh, was a... I think he, if memory serves me correctly, he was a Levite priest who decided that uh, he didn't like Moses getting all the glory, or was it Aaron, and decided he wanted a piece of the action. And the Lord God had a sinkhole or uh, something, earthquake or something, open up the ground, swallow him and his family up, and then closed on him. So, murder, greed, and pride, or rebellion against God, I guess you could say. That, these, are, these were the sins. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Cori. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds. Trees. Trees. Think about that. The tree of good and evil, right? Trees whose fruit withereth. Without fruit. Twice dead. Plucked up by the roots. What does it mean to be twice dead? Well, guess what? You die, you die, uh, you die physically, and then you die spiritually. Didn't Jesus say you needed to be born again? You needed to be born of a woman and the flesh, and then you needed to be born again of the spirit. Well, these people were never born again of the spirit. They're twice dead. Dead in the body and dead in the spirit. Plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars. Wandering stars. Now how do stars up in the sky, how do they wander? Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now, how in the world do stars have reserved the blackness of darkness forever? What, are you going to tell me they're black holes? No. All right, in Matthew chapter 25, Verse 28, uh, we're talking about the, the servants, and uh, God gave people talents, and some did something with their talents, and others did nothing. Verse 28, Jesus said, Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. So here it is, the, the, the guy that didn't do anything, they took from him what he had and gave it to the guy that multiplied his by ten times. I mean, let's face it, 
uh, if you're in business and somebody you give somebody a thousand dollars and and he says you know what I've multiplied your your thousand dollars to into ten thousand I mean that's the guy you want to you want doing stuff for you you know but the guy you give a thousand bucks he gives you your thousand bucks back you're like dude what is this you didn't do nothing so Jesus said Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. All right, let's go to uh, Matthew 22, verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, this is the, uh, the wedding, marriage of the... This is sort of like a the the wedding supper of the lamb i don't know if it's a parable or if it's a prophecy but it it's representative of the marriage supper of the lamb verse 11 and when the king came in to see the guest he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment and he said unto him friend how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. He couldn't say anything. I mean, you know, Jesus is going to give his people white robes. And if you don't have a white robe to cover your sin, well, how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. So do you get the picture? Sons of God, angels, stars, sometimes angels, sometimes lights up in the sky. We're going to go, there's a reason I'm making this, these points. You know, sometimes the Bible has figures of speech, and sometimes it's literal. And knowing the difference is very, very important. You know, you, you know what a figure of speech is. You know, guys will look at a really attractive woman, and say, wow, look at her. She's a fox. Obviously, she's not a four-legged creature with a tail. You know, so figure of speech. Or, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Well, I wouldn't eat a horse because it's not a clean animal, but hey, that's just me. France, it's considered a delicacy, but... You know, what What do you expect for the French, you know? And by the way, uh, my mother had French in her. So am I picking on the French? Well, what can I tell you? Now, in Luke chapter 3, uh, not to read the whole thing, but Luke 3, starting verse 36, they trace back, the lineage, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Shem, which was the son of Noe, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Melil, Melil, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. You see, Adam was a son of God, 
and all the angels were sons of God too. But we don't become sons of God until after we're born of the Spirit. We become the sons of God. So, oh boy, I, uh, it's almost 30 minutes and I haven't even, well, I proved one thing, I believe. When were the angels created? So I guess in part, the next part, I guess it's going to be five, um, I'm going to show when did the angels fall. Now, like I had shown you in previous lessons and earlier, when God created the heaven and the earth and up to the time that God created Adam on the sixth day, the end of the sixth day, everything was good. So sometime between the sixth day and the fall in the garden with the serpent, somewhere between that time is when Satan decided to try to overthrow the Lord God. And we're going to get into that. So I think what I'm going to do is close this out now. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor from, uh, comes from the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.